As we strive to produce better online content for our students, one of the things we will inevitably find ourselves doing more of is recording videos. The problem is, nobody likes the sound of their own voice on video. It's cringy and ooky and it just makes you want to curl up into a corner and never speak to anyone ever again. Unfortunately, the software doesn't yet exist that can make my gormless voice sound as velvety smooth as Morgan Freeman's. However, there are some simple tricks we can use to make our audio sound a little more presentable. So in this video, we'll be showing you how to clean up your audio recordings. The application we're going to be using is an awesome piece of free software called Audacity. This can be downloaded from the Audacity website and is available inside the UEL Software Center if you're working on campus. When you open Audacity, the first thing you want to do is to check that you have the right microphone selected. Use this menu here to select your mic. Before we start our recording, it's a good idea to do a little test. Now this can really help pick out some easy to fix problems before we even start. When you're ready, click the red record button to start recording and just speak into the microphone some lines. When you're finished, press the stop button. This blue squiggle represents the sound wave. The more violently wiggly it is, the louder the sound is. Where the line flattens, there's less sound. If you start recording and all you see is a long flat line, then this tells you that there's no sound being recorded, in which case it's a good idea to check that you have the right microphone selected or check that your microphone is connected properly. Here's a finished recording, so let's have a look at the sound wave and see what we have. One of the most obvious things here is these large spikes that are shooting up out of sight. Where the sound wave pops over the limits of this frame, the sound is going to be distorted and it will be pretty uncomfortable for people to listen to. A common cause of these distortions is the use of plosives, sounds like p, b, or t. These sounds can pop like balloons in front of our microphones and can really degrade the quality of the sound. The best way to fix issues of this sort is to have a look at how you are recording. You don't want to be too close to the microphone so that things are too loud, but then neither do you want to be so far away that you can't be heard. Having the microphone at about a hand's width away is a good starting point for finding that sweet spot. Just start recording and keep talking into the microphone, adjusting its position until the sound wave looks right, not shooting off the top and not being too low. Another thing to think about is the height of the microphone. The pops that you can get from the sounds p or t are often caused not by the volume of the sound, but because you're effectively blowing a short, sharp gust of wind at the microphone. If you'll forgive the expression, you want to make sure that your microphone is out of the line of fire of your peas. If you've already made your recording and it's too late or too difficult to correct your microphone position, Audacity has an effect called limiter. Now, this effect will take the loudest points in your recording and bring them down in volume. To use the limiter, select your sound wave by clicking just above it. You'll know you're clicking on the right spot when the cursor changes into this hand icon. With the wave selected, go to Effect menu and select Limiter. There are a number of options available here, but generally speaking, the default values will work fine, so just click on OK. You can now see that the sound is much more even and consistent. The limiter works by bringing down the loudest bits in your recording. However, it doesn't do anything with the quieter parts. Sometimes, to get a smoother sounding recording, you want to bring the quieter parts up in volume, at the same time as reducing the louder parts, compressing the sound wave into a smaller area so that the volume sounds more consistent and even to listeners. For example, in this sound wave, we can see that things start out very quiet. But halfway through the recording, I adjusted my chair and it got louder. 
To fix this, we're going to use the compressor effect. Select your sound wave as before, go to the effects menu and choose compressor. There are again several options here, but unlike the limiter, which you can usually leave at its default values, this one does need a bit of adjusting. There are three things to look at here. This line graph at the top, the ratio, and the threshold. To begin with, this graph gives a visual representation of how big the difference is between the loud bits and the quiet bits in your recording. The first thing to do is to adjust the threshold. As you can see, the more you bring down the threshold, the more the bottom end of this line rises, and the difference between the loud and the quiet narrows. You'll need to play around with this to find something that looks right. Around 30 seems good. Now to narrow the wave still further, you can use the ratio. Around 3 to 1 seems to work here. To see what this does to your recording, you can click on the preview. If it sounds fine, then click OK. Here you can see that the waveform looks more even and consistent, which should make for a more pleasant listening experience. Now in this sound wave, there is a constant jiggle of sound when I'm not talking. This jiggle represents the background hiss of a fan. If I play it back, you can hear it. Now what I want to do is to try and isolate that background hiss and then remove it from the rest of the recording. So I'll select this bit of audio where the hiss is all I can hear. I can do this by clicking and dragging the cursor across the bit I want to select. Now I go to the Effects menu and select Noise Reduction. I want to tell the program to look for the particular pattern of sound I've selected. So I'll click the button Get Noise Profile. This will copy the profile of the selected section. I can now ask the program to reduce that selection. If I click at the top of the clip, the whole clip will become highlighted. Go to the Effect menu and again select Noise Reduction. This time I want to go to step 2 and apply this noise reduction. You don't need to worry too much about all these settings, just click on OK and the noise reduction process will apply. Already we can see that that spiky background noise has reduced. Let's play it back. Now let's compare it to before. There's a definite improvement. However, I can repeat this process again and remove even more of the background hiss. OK, that's better. After you've applied all your volume related effects, it's a good idea to bring the volume for everything back up to a decent level. And we can do this with the normalize effect. Select your sound wave, go to effect and select normalize. The default value of this is normally fine to use. 0 dB is the loudest your sound can be. With this setting at minus 3 dB, Normalize will bring the loudest bits of your recording up to within 3 decibels of the loudest it can be. This will bring the rest of the recording up in volume relative to those loudest bits. Basically, it will give your recording a really good volume. So. Let's summarise the steps that are worth doing with your recordings. First, if you have any volume spikes, get rid of them with the limiter. Second, use the compressor to add an evenness to your voice. Third, use noise reduction to reduce any background hiss. Apply more than once if needed. Fourth, use normalise to give everything a good volume.